One of the most common feedback control algorithms is proportional integral derivative control, or PID control for short. It's called a feedback control algorithm because sensor feedback is used to help determine the control signal. As an example, let's say that I'm trying to control the angle of my arm, and my control is the torque that I apply at the shoulder. Maybe I want to hold the arm at 90 degrees, and it's currently sitting at 45 degrees. So then I would define the error as being 90 degrees minus 45 degrees, or 45 degrees of error. So let's give variables to those. We'll call u the control signal, or the torque to the motor. And the error is called E, and that's just the desired output value minus the actual. Okay. So with these definitions of variables, we can write the PID controller as simply U is equal to, the control is equal to KP times E. So K sub P is the proportional gain times the error, plus the integral gain, k sub i, times the integral of the error as a function of time, plus k sub d, which is the derivative gain, times the derivative of error as a function of time. Okay. So the k sub p times e term, that's actually acting like a spring. So if there's an error of 45 degrees from where I actually am to where I want to be, we multiply that by the, the proportional constant k sub p, and that gives us a torque. So it's acting just like a spring. It acts on position error to try to reduce it. This term here, k sub d, acts like a damper. So if the error is increasing, then it tries to create a force to make that rate of error decrease, and if the error is decreasing, then it's going to act to slow down the rate of decrease, so we get to error equals zero uh, without overshooting. So this is acting like a mechanical spring. This is acting like a mechanical damper in terms of error. And this integral term is a little bit harder to come up with a mechanical analog for, but here's the basic idea. If the arm has been sitting here with an error from the desired angle for some time, then this error is going to be integrating up over time, creating a larger and larger torque that tries to push the arm upward. So this integral term here is to try to get rid of steady state error. And we'll see that more in examples later. This is called a linear control law because the control value u is linear in the error, the integral of the error, and the derivative of the error. If we want to implement that in a computer, we can look at pseudocode. So first we initialize the value of the integral of the error. We initialize it to zero. And we're going to differentiate numerically the error currently from the previous error. So we're going to initially initialize the previous error as zero. And now we go into this control loop that gets executed every dt seconds. So typically for motor control, that might be every one millisecond, for example. So every one millisecond, we're going to go in and calculate the error, which is the desired position minus the position that we read from a sensor. Then we can calculate the derivative of the error by taking the current error, subtracting the previous error, and dividing by the time step. So now we've got E dot. And to calculate the integral of the error, we just take the previous integral of the error and add to it the current error times the time step dt. So this is a simple numerical integration scheme, simple numerical differentiation scheme. And then finally down here, we calculate u according to the, the control law that we just gave. Then, so the next time we can get the right numerical derivative, we set e previous equal to the current error. error. And then we send the control output, for example, the torque to the motor.